2014 was an interesting year for the gaming industry. We saw the release of major AAA titles such as Titanfall and Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. We also witnessed some of the greatest disappointments in gaming history in the form of Watch Dogs and Destiny. However, there was one game I played that year that flew relatively under the radar despite its relative critical and commercial success. I had heard nothing about this game leading up to its release, but I decided to buy a copy of the game on a whim. After playing for a few hours, I was hooked on one of the best story-driven shooters I had played in several years. had no knowledge or experience with the Wolfenstein franchise beforehand, as The New Order was my first introduction to the series. But what an introduction it was. Wolfenstein The New Order combines nail-biting gameplay and pristine graphical fidelity, with a surprisingly deep and emotionally complex story to create one of the best first-person shooters of this decade. Wolfenstein The New Order is one of my favorite games of all time. And this is why. You play as series protagonist B.J. Blaskowitz, an American soldier during the final days of World War II. Except, this is not the World War that we remember. The New Order follows an alternate timeline where the Nazis are winning the war with advanced technology that is leaps and bounds ahead of anything the Allies can muster. The game starts in 1946 as BJ and the Allied forces mount a last-ditch assault on a Nazi military compound belonging to the most vile human being to ever walk the face of the earth, Wilhelm Strauss, aka General Death's Head. Death's Head is responsible for creating the Nazis' unparalleled instruments of war, ranging from cybernetic hounds to super soldiers and giant robots. Eventually, the mission goes sideways and BJ and his comrades are captured by Death's Head, where you are then tasked with choosing between the lives of two soldiers, which provides minor changes during the course of the story and allows for multiple playthroughs. They manage to escape, but not before Blaskowitz catches a large chunk of shrapnel in the back of the head, leaving him in a catatonic state for 14 years while he recovers in a mental institution under the care of Anya Oliwa, BJ's romantic interest and one of the more interesting characters featured in the story. Breaking free from the prison of his mind, Blaskowitz returns to the world, though it has changed for the worse. The year is now 1960, and the Nazis now rule with supreme authority and have twisted and warped the many different cultures of the world. BJ and Anya join what remains of the resistance fighters in Europe, known as the Kreisau Circle, and together they set out to rid the world of Nazi influence and oppression once and for all. The story of Wolfenstein the New Order consistently surprised me with excellent writing and emotional character moments while also delivering dark humor and laughs along the way. It expert balances the gritty and somewhat depressing atmosphere of a world under the thumb of zealous rulers with the comedic and over-exaggerated violence often seen in Tarantino films. We get glimpses of the atrocities committed by the Nazi regime, albeit in the context of an alternate reality. Watching these scenes in-game reminds us that we must never allow anything like this to happen and it reinforces the hatred that both the player and Blaskowitz exude toward the Nazis. The characters you encounter are fantastic, with BJ, Anya, Wyatt, Fergus, Caroline, Set Roth, Max, Frau Engel, and Death's Head all being the standouts in my opinion. In truth though, BJ has the deepest emotional connection to the player as you progress through the campaign. BJ Blaskowitz is a man who has seen the worst that humanity has to offer. He yearns for a family and a normal life, but he also struggles with the reality of his situation and coming to grips with the one thing he excels at more than anything. Something he is wary of doing over and over again. A fate that he has consigned himself to, yet it is something he truly enjoys doing, as does the player. Killing Nazis. Thank you. 
and kill Nazis you most certainly will. With a large arsenal of weaponry at your fingertips, you'll blast through hordes of Nazi commandos, hounds, and mechanical monsters ready to destroy you. The gunplay in the New Order is raw and savage, much like BJ himself who tears through the Nazis with reckless abandon, wielding assault rifles, pistols, semi-automatic shotguns, sniper rifles, and even laser cannons. You can always use a single weapon in one hand, which makes the game more of a standard shooter, where you dip behind cover and pop back out again to pop some helmets off, which is always satisfying. Conversely, you can dual wield certain weapons, which doubles the firepower and doubles the amount of carnage you can dole out. Or, you can take a stealthy approach to different combat scenarios, allowing you to silently pick off Nazi soldiers one by one. The Nazi commanders present an interesting wrinkle to combat, however. These enemies will call for reinforcements if they spot you or you happen to set off an alarm. It is imperative that you eliminate the commanders first to avoid further altercations. However, if you want more of a challenge, you can meet them head-on and fight through the extra squadron of commandos sent to kill you. It's a small change, but one that brings an element of player choice into the experience, something that is always appreciated. The dismemberment and violence during combat are also comically twisted, with enough gore and exploding limbs to make Quentin Tarantino blush. In addition to this, there is a clever perk system in place that allows the player to do more with a given playstyle by simply fulfilling different requirements for these perks. For example, you might want to play through the game as stealthily as possible, and there is an entire perk tree centered around stealth. If you wish to carry throwing knives, you simply need to kill a certain number of enemies with stealth takedowns. The perk system is easy enough to get the hang of, and it provides another layer to the gameplay, giving the player more options for a given playstyle as they progress through the campaign. There are also non-combat areas, where you are allowed to explore the Resistance base and interact with the characters you meet throughout the story. These segments do a fantastic job of further immersing you in this alternate history and fleshing out the individual personalities of the cast. These non-combat segments also present puzzles for the player to solve, using a laser tool to cut through thin metal walls and fences. These moments are not too frequent, but they do enough to allow the player a reprieve from the breakneck pace of the rest of the game. How much fun would killing Nazis be though if the environments you fight in weren't interesting arenas to explore? The environments themselves are plentiful and varied, as Blaskowitz claws his way through prisons, bridges, submarines, and even the moon. Yes, you fight Nazis on the moon, and it is as grim and as humorous as you would imagine. Each of these levels provide different ways to fight your opponents, and they also house secret areas where you can find collectible items and background lore on the alternate history of the game, which helps to further expand the storyline. While the areas themselves might seem generic to some, the artistic design of each level and the graphical marvels of the in-game engine present each section as unique places to discover and battle in. Machine Games truly houses some of the best developers in the business, and that work is put on full display here. Running on the proprietary id Tech 5 game engine, this is one hell of a game to look at. Character models are extremely well detailed and the cutscenes are exceptionally well animated. This is still one of the best looking games on the market, even having been released over three years ago. The art design is also a powerhouse of ingenuity, showing us the world as it would appear if the Nazis had indeed taken over the world. Looming structures tower over you at all times, further reinforcing the oppressive atmosphere that the New Order so expertly displays. One thing I forgot to mention in my video on Prey, and something I wanted to mention here, is the fantastic musical score by the same mastermind behind both Prey and Doom, Mick Gordon. The blueprints that Gordon laid out for Doom were established here, with a heavy rock focus mixed in with quieter, more gentle pieces after a long stretch of unending carnage. Mick Gordon and the fine folk over at Machine Games even managed to put a twist on some of the most popular tunes of the 60s and turn them into bastardized versions of songs we've listened to over and over again. Heute der 
In summation, I believe Wolfenstein The New Order to be one of the most criminally underrated games of this decade, perhaps even of all time. It did manage to garner enough attention to warrant a sequel, which I am extremely excited about, as it will continue to tell a compelling narrative while also retaining the fast and aggressive gameplay of its predecessor. Some of you might be wondering, where is your analysis of the old blood? Well, the answer to that question is simple. I enjoyed the New Order far more than the old blood, as I felt that the occult themes of that title drastically conflicted with the tone that was set up in the New Order, despite the fact that the Wolfenstein franchise has maintained a supernatural element throughout the years. I love Wolfenstein the New Order, and hopefully this video has shown you some of the reasons why I love this game, and I hope that you'll try it out for yourself. Thanks for watching folks, be sure to leave some comments letting me know what you think about Wolfenstein The New Order, and remember that the outsider walks among us.